Ja, Entschuldigung, Inge, du hast eine ganz letzte Zeit auf. This was the last time I read it. Other scans on? No. How do you solve the circuits? We can actually use the junction law or uh, we can actually use, you know, the Kirchhoff's law to solve. Uh, let's do one equation with junction law and then we'll go ahead. We have done this before. This point ka voltage is 3V, this point ka voltage is 2V, this point ka voltage is V. This is the enter space. Find VD. And current in each branch. This is the fourth time you're seeing this. Let's get this. How do we do this? Try, 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 you got a minute. Okay, hello. How do we start this thing, everyone? We have done this before. Assume a current type from the junction and uh, you can split it or... This is how you start. We are using junction law here. Let this guy current be I1. Let this guy current be I2. Let this be I3. And we know I1 plus I2 plus I3 has to be zero because current can't come out of a junction just like that. The total current at a node should be zero. So current always flows from higher to lower potential. So you're assuming D is greater than A and D is greater than B, D is greater than C. That's the reason you took the current this way. So first thing, remember this. You really don't know how the current flows. It will go from A to D and then it will split. But there's no guarantee it will go from B to D or D to B. 
So you don't know. So let's keep it very simple. Assume current from D. That will keep your life easy. Exam, you won't get confused, you know, should I take this way, that way. So this guy would be VD minus VA by resistance R. VD minus VB by resistance 2R. VD minus VC by resistance 3R is zero. One equation, you'll get VD value from here. Once you got V2, when VD put it back there, you get I1, I2, I3. Can you solve? Solve, I'll give you a minute from here. So in current rate, we will see more of, you know, junction law. Kirchhoff's law you can use, but junction law is actually more easy in terms of, you know, equations. We will see a few problems with both the methods. End of the day, you can choose whichever you like. Solve, solve, solve fast. Everyone should solve. Let's see. Just substitute the values here. R gets cancelled here. VD minus V plus VD by 2. And VB is that guy will be V again. And this will be VB by 3. And this will be minus V by 3. This guy would be 3V. <coughs> and that's 0. Bring all VDs together. 1 plus 1 plus 1 by 3, 5 by 6. Uh, 11 by 6 VD. And... Uh, would be 4 plus 1 by 3, 13 by 3. Better we had 1, 26 by 11. Am I right? Perfect. I think once I got that, you are done. Rishi, 10 kaha sa hai, Rishi? God, yaha pe to 3, 2, 1 hai. It should be between them. How the hell did you get? You should get a Nobel Prize. You have generated free power out of nothing. You are the world savior. You have removed Africa from poverty. You are the future. <laughs> With a battery of 3 volt, you just a 10 volt out of nothing. Clear? Once you get this, put it there and you get the answer. Next one. Steps to solve the circuit. Now, if a circuit does not have symmetry, parallel, series, Wheatstone, nothing, you always go back to the Kirchhoff's law, the junction law. So step one, if there are multiple batteries, choose any one battery with giving current time. Same thing what we did in capacitors. Distribute the current using junction law. We distributed the charge in capacitors. Apply Kirchhoff's loop law. No? 
solve the equations. For R equivalent, find V by I ka ratio. This is how we can do it. Or alternate. We can use junctional law. In this, what you do, assume any one point as zero potential. I'll show you both the examples. And apply junction law at the remaining nodes. Actually, before that, you have to define potential set the nodes. Fourth solve. Let me show you both the things. Example. So can you go back for a second? Hmm. Yeah. This is the circuit. See this thing? No series, no parallel, no Wheatstone, no symmetry, nothing. We have to use the Kirchhoff's law or the junction law here. So, first, what we will do, to we, V, R, R, to R, assume current I from any one battery, I'll assume I from here. So, I will come from here, I1 will go here, small i, and the remaining current will go here, I minus i. Then I'll apply Kirchhoff's loop law in this loop and this loop. I'll start from this point here, A. I'm writing for the left loop. So VA, I'm going in the direction of the current. Whenever you go in the direction of the current through a resistor, the voltage will decrease. Minus, what is the voltage across the resistor? I into R, opposite to the battery. Then I'm going opposite to the current flow, plus I into 2R, I came back to VA. This guy, V would be minus 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 3i r. That's your equation one. If you take the right loop, VA, I'm going down minus i into 2r, and I'm going through the battery plus 2v, and then minus i into r is equal to VA. Again, I came back to VA. And we get 2v is equal to i into r plus 2i small r. Please check the equations first of all. If you got the equations, your job's done. When you go through a resistor, you always go, current goes from higher to lower potential. So if you go in the direction of the current, potential should drop. And potential across a resistor is i into r. So minus i r. Where i is the current in the branch. Small IR will be IR minus V by 3. Take this guy and substitute here. We get 2V IR plus 2 by 3 IR minus 2V by 3. This thing turns out to be 2 plus 2 by 3. 3 to 6 plus 2, 8 V by 3. And this would be 3 plus 2, 5 IR by 3. 8V by 5R. Check. This is how you solve using Kirchhoff's. Straightforward. Apply and finish it off. Have a look at the steps. Main thing, if you got the equations, it is just a matter of solving. Let me show you the same question with junction law. And you'll observe. You'll get the equations a little much faster. So you take a call which one you like.
But do first of all have a look at this. Ah, sure, dear. Sir, opposite to the flow of current, we go then we take negative. Positive, na. Ah, okay. When you go opposite to the current, means what? You are going from lower to higher potential, na? Yes. Kal bol raha tha na. If you go opposite to the river ka flow, means you are climbing the hill. Okay. Water always flows from higher altitude to lower altitude. If you go with the river, your altitude decreases. If you go opposite to the river, your altitude increases. In this case, altitude is your voltage. Why so many people are missing today? Clear? Sir, so when you were solving for the right part, you took I is coming from that left and wala battery. <sighs> This bat, this thing, current is going into the battery, na? Okay. Current to already to decide kar liya, na? I and all. Okay. So that current distribution, if you ask me, sir, how did you take like this? You can choose any battery you want, doesn't matter. How you okay. choose your current ka flow has nothing to do with how you choose your loop. You can keep them independent of each other. But uh, let's say this using junction law. I am sure that will be more convenient. So in a junction law, first thing, assume any point has zero potential. So I'll start with this. This is zero. The reason why you can do that, because end of the day, what matters is potential difference. You can choose any line as a reference line. So listen carefully here. So let this be zero. Let this be X, which I don't know. This is also zero. Then this is two V. This is also zero. Then this is V. Agreed? These are all the nodes. Sub nodes ka potential agya. Let this current be I1. Let this current be I2. Let this current be I3. From a node, assume the current is going in all the directions. Then it is just like that problem right now. So we know I1 plus I2 plus I3 is zero. So this would be X minus V by R plus X minus uh, zero by two R plus X minus two V by R is equal to zero. R gets canceled. You end up with X minus V plus X by two plus X minus two V is equal to zero. Five X by two is equal to three V. X is equal to six V by five, five. So you want to find I3, I3 is nothing but X minus 2V by R. Substitute here, six minus this thing. That would be six by five minus two, minus four V by five R. We got here eight V by five R, I messed up somewhere. Them as up here. One of them is wrong. I3, I got here 8V by 5R now. It turns are right. VA minus I minus I, V, R, 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 O, R, only right. Minus V plus I into 2R, 0. Uh, I wrote wrong here. This was minus. Should be how much we a cancel so if we go that side, it will be minus i r. This is plus i go for these calculations. V plus i r by three. Four v by three is five i r by three. I is equal to 4V by 5R. 
i is equal to minus 4 by 5r because you assumed i3 this way na but i3 is opposite isn't this better yes faster tha you can do the same thing in capacitors also have a look at this you'll want to get the x k value your jobs done axel do check it out how we did the junction law only thing is junction you have to start with something as zero put the potentials and apply junction at one node do check it out let's see one more like this you can choose anything as zero that is the whole story right you can take any point as zero potential you can choose any point as reference Hello. Ask now. What do you want to ask? Why are you talking to yourself? Ask. Why are all of them C? Because everything is the same wire. Isn't this the same wire? Isn't this the same wire? As long as the wire is same. If you say one point is zero, everything is zero. Clear? Yeah. Ask now. Why do you keep your mic on unmute and you talk to yourself? I will understand. I can't do lip reading. I might learn in a year or so. Clear. Next one. Now you guys try this thing. Ah, the event show. What happened? Tired. Headache. Eyes are paining. No oh, sir, I'm good. You're good. Now you guys try this. P, two V, three V, R, two R, three R. Find V A minus V B and the current in each branch. Let's get this. We can use junction law. We'll use junction law and solve. Junction law first step. Choose any one point is zero. Here A looks good. Once you put A as zero, find the potentials at the remaining points. If you don't know the potentials, assume the variables x and y and start from there. Try. You got two minutes. Then I'll show you how to do. You try whatever you think. Let's see. This page here. Sure.
Yeah. See whether you did the same nodes here. So I'll start with this is zero. If this is zero, this is zero because it's the same wire. This is also zero because it's the same wire. This is also zero because it's the same wire. Now, when you go from a battery, this guy will become this point becomes V, this point becomes 2V, and this point becomes 3V. Let this B be X because I don't know the value. You're done. Let the current be I1, I2, I3. Make sense? I1 plus I2 plus I3 is zero. Assume current is going from X1 or going to X. It doesn't matter. You choose any direction you want. Now just substitute and solve. Finished up. 18 by 11. What is 18 by 11? God. V minus VB. Uh -huh. Okay. Try, try others. I'll give you a minute now. That's it. If you see junction law is more peaceful. Kirchhoff's law you can still do, but you'll get two equations and solve many. Fine. It's just a little lengthy. It should have worked. Junction Kirchhoff's law has its own use. I'll show you next question where Kirchhoff's law becomes actually useful. But most of the time, circuits with a uh, neat junction law, you can finish it off. Sir, can you shoot the question? The I1 would be X minus uh, the potential difference V by R, X minus 2V by 2R, X minus 3V by 3R, and that's zero. R cancels off. X minus V, X by 2 minus 1, X by 3 minus V minus V is equal to zero. Bring all X together. 11x by 6 is 3v. x is 18v by 11. Perfect. And from here, I can find i2, uh, which is x minus 2v by 2r. And that guy would be 18 by 11 minus 2. We are actually getting a negative, means current direction is wrong. That's okay. The sign will take care of it every time. 11, 2, 22, minus 4, we by 11 R. So minus 2, we by 11 R. I hope that is the current in the middle branch. Now you want to go from A to B. Apply Kirchhoff's law from A to B. Now see that Kirchhoff's law is always there. It is useful. It is not a useless thing. If you want to go from one point to another point, potential junction law is not really that, that useful here. Uh, actually, it's not karne ka zarut bhi nahi hai. You already know X, you already know Z. You can just do X minus zero, no? VB minus VA is nothing but X minus zero. You are just asking for X. There's no need to solve that. Don't need to trust me in this case. Check it out. Please check. I hope you're getting how to solve these questions. Junction law is much more safer for you guys. There is a high chance you can goof up. Like even I did the calculation mistake. One plus and one minus and whole thing will go for a toss. Yeah, you just have to be careful. You can do the same thing in capacitors also. I did show you some examples with capacitors also. Only thing they will take charges of Q1, Q2, Q3. Check. 
let me show you which Kirchhoffler is also useful. Any doubts on this, please ask me. Chirayu, Divyanshu, Anamai, clear? Mirinda, Rena, got this? Trisha, Danya, clear? Asini, got this? Perfect. Next one. Turning the page. There. All the batteries of uh, resistance are 4 ohms and all the batteries are 10 volts. Find I1 minus I2. This is I2. Huh? And this was I1. This is I2 and this is I1. Get the here, junction law won't be useful. Remember this thing, maze? I, I taught you in uh, here. Yeah, try. All resistance of forums, all batteries are 10 volts. I and I1 minus I2. Two minutes. Hmm. Hey, yeah. They can never give an I don't know the answer. Thank <laughs> you. 
you have to find a path. So for this guy, this path, no? You should make sure not to go through any other resistor. And this full resistance will be R. This will be R, R, R by two. And this will be R. So when I went through this, there is only one battery here. Uh, there are multiple batteries actually. One, two, two batteries are there. So the red path will have 2V minus I2 into 5R by two. So we get I2 is equal to 4V by 5R. So V is 10 and R is 4. So 2 ampere, I2 is 2 ampere. Check. So this is I1. So when you go through the green path, you're going through plus V, plus V, minus V, plus V. So there are four batteries, but uh, two batteries are cancelling out. So you get a V plus V minus V plus V minus I1 R is equal to zero. <clears throat> I1 is 2V by R. That is 20 by 4 and that is 5 ampere. That's your I1. He's asking the difference I1 minus I2. 5 minus 2 is 3 ampere. Check. Sir. Hmm. Sir, is me junction no lag sakta to usko zero man ke fir wo minus 10 hoga fir wo 20 kar lena kar lena there are just 10 junctions sab ka dal do okay <laughs> there are 10 junctions dal do kar sakte ho pagal ho jaoge bas aur kuch nahi hai by the time you mark all the junctions you'll go mad there so kitchos law is useful here we have a lot of junctions and here the trick is that only na you have to go through, find a path such that there's only one resistor and remaining all the batteries. Got this, everyone? It's a good one. Any doubts on this, please ask. Next thing. So positive center coming into minus minus this. Kar sakte hai. Kuch You'll get it. Next thing. Study state. Now we heard this term before. You know where? Study flow. Fluid magnet. Flow. Are? Are you Cross flow. We had also done the parallel plates. Study state. Cross flow. Huh. Yeah, Matla, end of the day, steady state is actually a general thing. So what is the meaning of a steady state? The property at a given position does not change with time. In case of fluid mechanics, it is a velocity, pressure. In case of, you know, Gauss light is a charge distribution. At a given position does not change with time. So, in current electricity, whenever you say the circuit is in steady state, here charges on capacitors do not change. Basically, the property should not change. So, this implies current in the branch with the capacitor will be zero. Because the charge is not changing, the, there should be no current in that branch. Example, if someone says like this, there's a resistor, there's a resistor and there's a capacitor like this. And if they say it's in steady state. So if they mention the word steady state, it is understood. If this current is uh, two ampere, one ampere, let's say, 
all the current should definitely go here one ampere and in this brand there is current is zero you're getting it because in steady state the charge on the capacitor becomes constant that means there should be no current flowing in that branch so if you say this current is i this has to be i whereas this current i will be zero and let's say this charge q is constant so dq by dt will be zero that is the meaning of a steady state if they have a circuit with capacitors resistors and everything and they use the word uh steady state then it is gone i'm sure you're saying something yes sir i wrote it okay okay that thing right so this is the meaning of one thing okay so be careful with that and uh, in steady state the current in the resistors becomes constant so current in the capacitor branch is zero current in the resistors is constant current in branches with only resistors let me show you how they'll pop up questions on this <clears throat> so let me show an example so they will say there is a battery resistor resistor and let's say there is a capacitor and there is a resistor so this is v this is r this is 2r this is r and c let's say there is a switch here now you need to understand how does a capacitor behave you know when it closes the switch this is quite an important thing at t0 when the switch is about to be closed at t0 when the switch is closed do you guys remember how did the capacitor worked when you close the switch initially if you remember the story of a capacitor ka charging so plus to minus to one is this is the story right see the moment you close the switch initially both the plates are neutral so the electrons were going from the negative plate to the positive plate so that means at t is equal to 0 there is no resistance right they'll easily go but once some electrons start accumulating here they will start off offering resistance and eventually there will be so much charge on the plates the current will stop flowing completely this is what we call the steady state isn't it so same thing happens here so what happens here at t0 when the switch is closed since the capacitor is you know the plates have no charge can actually capacitor ka page 5 this is that when the plate switch is closed the capacitor offers zero resistance capacitor will say no problem you can go because there is no charge on them anywhere capacitor offers zero resistance so at t0 whenever you have a capacitor you can treat this like a wire at that instant for a just moment after a long time when the capacitor ka charges have induced completely capacitor is fully charged it won't let any more charge come through it offers infinite resistance it will not let any more current flow through it that is it becomes an open circuit so at t infinity a capacitor becomes like an open circuit this thing you can refer capacitor space 5 now if you look at this circuit so it means t0 when you close the switch 
this is how the circuit will be look resistor resistor the capacitor becomes like a wire so r 2r and r this is how it looks r and 2r are in parallel 2r by 3 2r by 3r r equivalent will be 5r by 3 current will be 3v by 5r so the battery will give a current of 5v by 3r if you keep this closed for a long time infinity the capacitor will come full the circuit will look like this open branch so this will be r and 2r and this is v so here r equivalent will be 3r current will be v by 3r now the battery gives a different amount of current please check this is how we do steady state so if you have a resistor and a capacitor together at t0 a capacitor will behave like a wire at t infinity it will become like a open circuit what happens in the middle that we will see later on for that we have to integrate we call rc charging and discharging circuits these are important they have a pretty good weightage and the same things again will repeat in electromagnetic induction study states do have a look at this example and the theory ones and others do keep your cams on an empty capacitor will offer no resistance initially charge is independent of battery shaw yeah okay no? hey, you don't have a look at this page so but wo oh, capacitor wo oh, page 5 wale diagram mein pehle to they were neutral but after some time they got plus to and minus to charge but total zero hai na Ah, okay, okay. That way. So means battery will not produce some more charge, na? Matlab. Yeah. Okay. Battery simply takes charge from one place and gives it to another place. It does not create any charge of its own. Okay. Please take this example. All clear with this? Anya, Amu, got this? Next one. Now, well, like you guys try this thing. C, C, R, R, and R. Find the current in the battery at T zero and T infinity. The switch is closed at T zero. If you just close the switch, find the current in the battery. If you close the switch after a long time, find the And then this is not a Wheatstone bridge record. Resistor and capacitor. Wheatstone bridge कहाँ से हुआ? Either all should be capacitors or all should be resistors. No, at t equal to zero, we can assume at r. क्या बात कर रहे हो? ये लेजिम कैपेसिटर्स आर at t zero. अभी तक इतना क्या बोल रहा था मैं? T zero what it is? It's a wire. Ah, sorry, a ah, wire. ठीक है. Try this, everyone. It's a good one. Is it not clear so far? Kavish, clear. Great. Try, try, try. You got a minute or two. It's a good one.
अच्छा सर डाई करे गॉड्स टी जीरो How does the circuit look like? These things will become wires, isn't it? T zero it will look like this. Can you see something? If this is point A, if this is also point A. If this is point B, this is also point B. All three are in parallel. Look at the potential difference. A B, A B, A B. All are in parallel. Kind of looks like this, isn't it? All three are in parallel here. So the current I will be uh, V by R by three at T infinity. The capacitors will be open circuits. Series. The circuit becomes like this. They all are in series. Same current will flow, na? So the current will be V by three R. Easy. The T zero, the parallel T infinity becomes series. That's it. It's an easy equation, but it's a good one. Clear with this? First one, then we done by the nodal analysis also, na? Because why? Q करने इतना. There are only two terminals. अब लॉजिकली सोचा है सॉरी देर ओनली टू टर्मिनल्स एंड ऑल आर बिटवीन द टू टर्मिनल्स मतलब ऑल आर पैरेलल इज इट ओके इफ देर ओनली टू टर्मिनल्स मतलब पोटेंशियल डिफरेंस बिटवीन एनी द कैपेसिटर इज सेम ऑल आर इन पैरेलल दिख तो रहे क्लियरली दिख रहे ऑल गॉट दिस लेट्स सी वन मोर लाइक दिस स्टडी स्टेट Find uh, the charge on the capacitor at infinity. Wait, I'm giving a simpler one. V R two R. Find the charge on the capacitor and the current in the branches at infinity.
how do you do this thing? First, you have to draw the circuit at infinity. Let me draw this big one. Why did it draw such a small one? What did I take this R and this is to R, no? So listen carefully here. Huh? Finding current is easy, but if they ask you the charge, you have to do something more here. At T infinity, current in the capacitor branch is zero. So let the current flow I, let the current flow I, the current will continue to flow here and this current is zero and let this plate ka charge be plus two. And this would be minus two, agreed? So there'll be some charge on the capacitor and the current in the branch is zero. Now, if you apply Kirchhoff's law in this outer branch, means if you go like this, you get a V, minus ir minus i into 2r and you came back to the zero so i will be v by 3r that was easy now if you go inside v minus ir minus small i into r minus q by c is equal to zero I'm starting from here. So this would be small i is zero. So V minus IR will be V by three. This would be zero is equal to Q by C. So Q is equal to two CV by three. This is how you can find. So assume a charge Q in the capacitor branch and the current in that branch is zero. Apply Kirchhoff's law passing through the capacitor will get the charge. Have a look at this. Let me show you one more like this. You can actually just remove the central branch you know, to find the current and then just assume a Q on the center branch and finish it off. Clear? Can you do one thing for me? Can you find the charges on this also at infinity? This question, find current at T0, find current at infinity and find charges at infinity. Zero to any weight is zero. Ah, you can actually remove the central branch. Yeah, what you're saying is right then. It's not You could have actually removed the central branch. It'd be a single loop. So directly as I current V by three R. Then you can put the central branch in right Kirchhoff's law. Okay. Find in this question, find the current, uh, find the charges at infinity. Try, try, try. These study set questions are pretty good ones, right? So, sir, can you show the solution of the latest questions, previous question? Oh, 
Okay, sir. Okay. Get this thing, everyone. See, the question may here only T infinity, how does it look? It looks like this. So let me draw the circuit at T infinity. So T infinity, resistor, 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 circuit became like this. R, R, and R. Someone got an answer. CV by three, let's see. Let the current be I here. So the current will simply flow through the resistors that will completely avoid the capacitors here. So I would be V by three R, all three are in series. So let the charges be, this guy be the positive plate and this guy be the positive plate. I will apply Kirchhoff's loop law in this loop and this loop, starting from here. So if I take the left loop, I'll take this Q1 and Q2. We don't know the values also. No? So the left loop starting from A, VA, minus IR, I'm going from negative to positive plate, so plus Q1 by C, minus IR, I came back to VA, VA, VA goes off. The Q1 will be C into 2IR. IR is nothing but V by 3, 2CV by 3. Same thing, if you take the right loop, these questions are quite important, right? Make sure you do them again on your own. So we go from VA, then I'll go from positive to negative plate, minus Q2 by C, then I'm going opposite to the current minus IR. Again, I'm going opposite to the current minus IR. I came back to VA. So Q2 is also equal to C into 2 IR. Uh, they should be same anyway, symmetry. Check. This is how we find charges on a capacitor at infinity. So study state, there are two things here. At T0, they will act like uh, wires and infinity, they act like open branches. If you want to find the charges at infinity, find the current and assume there's a Q on the capacitor and apply Kirchhoff's law through the capacitor. And at infinity, current in the capacitor is zero. Please check this concept. These are steady state questions where you have a combination of capacitors and resistors. So we can assume any plate to be positive. Yeah, you can assume any plate to be positive. The sign will take care of it. I'll look at this, any doubts on this, please ask. 
everyone should start solving capacitor abstraction don't delay too much i'm telling you current chapter next sunday tak maximum will be over we really don't have too much of a time portion bhi ja rahe speed se and uh, we are doing everything right but uh, if you see it is almost july now we have like what august september october that's it we have barely 3 and a half to 3 and a half months left we have to wind up the portion by november 15th 14th is, i think 12th is diwali before that we have to finish ha chota chota topics one or two left out so that is okay main ka topics but the major portion will be over by then so we actually counted august 15 september 15 october 15 november 15 four months and the next 5 6 months will be stressful that is the whole point of it this is a time when you can withstand this thing and you can keep working you will be way ahead of any people like i was telling you yesterday you have to do 100 but you can do 60 at least focus on the 60 and get that done next thing just finish off your basic material like you are doing hcv start pyqs if you are doing my booklet do pyqs you can start doing pyqs for every chapter you can buy it from arihan or you can get it online or else i'll post a book in the group you can get chapter wise pyqs you can do them for every chapter helps because anyway once the portion gets over we have to do them now rc charging circuit so let's say we have a capacitor we have a resistor we have a battery with a switch so you studied the charges at t0 you studied at infinity what happens in the middle and let's say the this thing already has some charge q initial let qi be the initial charge on the capacitor I mean capacitor is not empty so the moment you close the switch this is what happens to the circuit let this be small q let this current be i this is c and this is r we know current i is equal to dq by dt derivation is not uh, not that important matlab it is important only advanced perspective or you know if there are some questions if the change you need to know the derivation so listen carefully apply kirchhoff's loop law in this we get v minus q by c minus ir is equal to 0 it's not a big derivation but so this thing if you just uh, cv minus q is equal to i into rc so i can write i is equal to cv minus q By RC, I can write I is equal to dQ by dt, so that will be CV minus Q by dt by RC. Integrated on both sides. Initial charge is Q initial to small Q. This will be zero to t. Have a look at this. I'll show it in the next page. So assume charge Q at any time t. Current beat. small i so we wrote a kirchhoff's law in the middle of the thing it is not really steady state this is a non steady state steady state was easy just make the capacitor open circuit and you got the answer so we are trying to study what happens in the middle Yeah. Are in the clear with this? Then, so dQ CV minus Q is equal to dT by RC. Q initial to Q and zero to T. So this will be minus ln CV minus Q. Limits Q initial to Q is equal to T by RC. So this will be ln. cv minus q by cv minus 
QI. I'll teach you later on a method, you know, where you can solve without integration. So CV minus Q is equal to CV minus QI e to the power of minus T by RC. We get Q is equal to CV minus CV minus the initial charge into E power minus T by RC. If the capacitor was initially empty, that is uh, QI is zero. This is the standard formula you'll find in the books. This will become CV into one minus E power minus T by RC. And we know current I is equal to DQ by DT. You can mug it up. Mains and bits, the direct questions you get. It's an exponential function. If you try to plot the charge versus time graph, this is what you'll observe. The charge is zero initially empty and continuously increases to CV. It takes infinite time to fully charge a capacitor. So if we take this time, we call it tau TC. This is 0.63 C. That is actually eka value there. So this value here, time, tau is equal to RC is called time constant. Basically in one time constant, the capacitor will become 63% full. Have a look at this. The results are important. So if you take a capacitor and if you keep put it, immediately you won't get full charge. You know, the thing we wrote, na, Q is equal to CV, Q is equal to CV. It actually takes time. Huh, but in reality, the time is quite small, like maybe in microseconds or something, but it does take time. Because if you remember that R into CC is always in microfarads. Let's say if you take R is 10 ohms and capacitance is one microfarad, that is a time of 10 power minus five seconds. It's quite small. This is RC charging circuit. Clear? Check. Clear everyone. Same thing, if you try to plot the graph for the current, I versus T graph. If you look at here, the current initially is a high value and then slowly decays. So initially current is V by R. This is 0.37 V by R. You can also define tau time constant as time in which current becomes, current decays by 60%. So you can say charges by 63% or decays by 63%. Did you ever hear this word, you know, whenever you charge your mobile, did you observe? Initially, first 50, 60% charges pretty fast. 
reverse when you're discharging also the first 100 to 90 80% discharge is fast uh, yes yes kabhi observe karke dekho last 20% oh, will take yeah. a lot of time or last 40% will take a lot of time but the first 20 30% will discharge pretty fast devices are generally like this and these phone companies are so smart you know what do they advertise uh you charge 60% of the mobile in first 25 minutes as if it's a big feature observe that thing you keep seeing there is a feature first 30 minutes when you will charge your mobile with 60% cut even if they don't do anything maybe instead of 60 would have charged 50% on your own so bullshit it's mostly bullshit actually devices charge automatically faster in the beginning and then slowly charge up later on everyone copied this formula let me show you how they pop up questions on this exam they would ask like this they'll say we have a capacitor battery with a switch r c and v find time when the first question charge on the capacitor is half of maximum energy in the capacitor is half of maximum see which page i'll show remember capacitor the maximum charge at infinity previous page here let's get this we have an rc charging circuit charge on capacitor in two time constants straight forward questions you get on this study research questions are important and then later on i'll show you you know next class we will see some advanced questions like uh, where you get uh, with rnc something i'll show you more more than one battery those are good ones these things are that formula based try 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 2 3 minutes so can you explain that graph for me which graph oh 0.63 wala wo value aayega if you put that if you put t is equal to r you'll get e power minus 1 e power minus 1 ka value is that oh. 1 by e ka value e is 2.713 calculator use karke dekh lena easy people just have to substitute the formula q is equal to cv into 1 minus e power minus t by rc you are saying half of maximum so here uh, first of all maximum charge is q max is cv so half of maximum is cv by 2 cv into 1 power e minus t by rc cv cv cancels off you get e power minus t by rc is equal to r put ln on both sides minus t by rc is equal to ln r so t will be rc ln 2 okay check direct substitution what about energy try 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 i'll give you another minute or two same thing if you ask you find the time when the energy in the capacitor is half of maximum again you get max energy at infinity
see everyone. What is it? Uh, as an energy in the capacitor. Energy in a capacitor is Q square by 2C. Per half of maximum energy, charge becomes how much? 1 by root 2 times. Square na, becomes Q by root 2. So this formula, Q is nothing but CV. Oh yeah, just substitute that. So CY root 2 is equal to CV into 1 power E power minus T by RC. CV, CV cancels off. We get E power minus T by RC is equal to 1 minus 1 by root 2. Put ln on both sides. Ln root 2 minus 1 by root 2. There. Like I said, direct formula substitutions. Remember this quite a useful one. Again, we will see this thing in LR circuits. Third one is easy. Q is equal to CV into 1 power E minus T by RC. You are saying two time constants. So CV into 1 power minus E by 2 RC. RC, RC will cancel CV into 1 minus 1 by E square. Check. Are clear with this? Danya, Rena, clear? Last concept. <clears throat> RC discharging circuit. So we have done charging right now. What happens if you discharge a capacitor? Let's say you have a capacitor, resistor, and this thing. This is R and this is C, and let's say it already has some charge Q. So the moment you close the switch, this is what the circuit looks like. Let the charge become small q and let the current i flow here and i will be minus dq by dt because the charge is decreasing apply kirchhoff's loop law you're going from positive to negative plate negative to positive plate so q by c minus ir is equal to zero. This integration will be easy actually. So this will be q by c, q by rc is equal to i. And we know i is equal to minus dq by dt. Minus dq by q is equal to minus dt by rc. Integral. This will be q, two small q, zero. To t minus ln q by capital Q is T by R C. We get Q is equal to Q into E power minus T by R C. If you differentiate this, you get the current, which is Q by R C into E power minus T by R C. This is a discharging circuit co formula. Right? <clears throat> the general confusion, right? Sometimes, you know, I have seen people get confused. Sir, should I use uh, Q into 1 minus E power minus RC or Q into E power minus T by RC? You think logically, when you're charging the circuit at T0, charge kitna hona chahiye? Zero. If you use formula Q into E power minus T by RC, if you put T0, I'm getting Q, na? So you get the point. Charging circuit, we should get zero. Discharging, we should get Q. So that is how you can, you know, figure it out which one is the formula in case you get confused because I used to get confused like that. And if you try to plot the graph, graphs are important. Q versus time. 
the charge curve value will go from Q decays. Again, we define time constant tau is the amount of time to decay the charge by 63%. So it is reverse. Charging way, you will charge by 63%. When you decay, you decay by 63%. And uh, the current graph will look exactly the same. This is discharging circuit. Put it up. So we took a like you know single battery, single capacitor, and single resistor. So these are standard circuits, RC charging and RC discharging. So in the next class, we will see more like what happens if there are two batteries or two resistors and one capacitor or two capacitors and all that stuff. That will be the more important part. So if someone is doing HCV for capacitors or resistors. Please go through the notes first of all properly. We did almost 25 problems here on. You can actually finish all the first 45 questions. Let's see if you can finish the first 45 questions. I'm telling you this thing from long time. Huh? Capacitors start doing, start doing. Capacitors got over when uh, we finished it on Saturday. 8th of July, today 16, you had a week. So do start solving parallelly. There is no way out. I know it will be a bit of a rush, but, and actually, frankly speaking, I'm going pretty slow for you guys. I'm taking a one, 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 slowly we are doing, you know, everything. We are taking more examples because I do understand it will be a struggle. If you finish the chapter by Saturday, you guys won't have time to do anything. I don't want to do like that. End of the day, it is not like, you know, I teach and say, my portion I don't want to be like that. You also have to solve parallelly. That is the whole point, right? What is the point? I finish all the portion and you didn't solve anything. 